Pleasant morning, family and friends. I greet you in the wonderful name of Christ our Savior and soon coming King. So thankful to the Lord Almighty that He has blessed me and He has blessed all of us with the gift of this new day that we still enjoy health in our body. We may not be enjoying the same measure of health. However, we are really thankful and we ought to bless God again this morning for all His choicest blessings upon our lives as we gather ourselves together this morning. I thank God for another opportunity to minister unto you this day the word of the Lord this morning, the word that is able to heal, the word that is able to set you free, the word that is able to bring deliverance, comfort, joy, and happiness, hallelujah, in your life. And that word is not my word, but that's the word of the Lord today. We give God thanks for his word. Let's bless and lift up the name of the Lord. Father, we worship you this morning because of who you are. You are an awesome God. You are a great God and great King over all the ends of the earth. In your hand, Lord, at the deep places, and Lord, you hold us even in the palm of your hand. We thank you this morning that, Lord, we can gather ourselves together in your name. We thank you, great God, that we could even wait before you to receive a word from you. For Lord, if we don't hear from you, what will we do? So Lord, as we wait before you this morning, we pray dear God that you will speak for thy servant hear it. And Lord, when you speak this morning, let your word go forth even with clarity that Lord, your word would accomplish the purpose for which you would have sent it this morning. Bless to us now your word, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I thank God this morning to be privileged again to share with you. And I want my friends to share with you for a while this morning on fear. You will find me reading from the first book of Samuel, chapter 10 and verse 8. And then we would go over to chapter 13, verses 11, 12 and 13. And the word of the Lord is as follows. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal. And behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. And we go over to chapter 13 from verse 11, 12, and 13. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmash. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. This is the word of the Lord, and we give God thanks for his word. As I forementioned, my brothers and my sisters, my friends, whether you are home, whether you're in our own country, whether you are abroad, wherever you are this morning, we thank God. And I want to talk to you this morning from the title, Fear. And we ask ourselves this morning, what is fear? And fear is defined as an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat or danger. The likelihood of something unwelcome happening. In other words, it means be afraid of or anxious about. And from this passage this morning before us, we read this morning, we are told this morning, so we are told in that 13th chapter that Saul said, you know, that I go before and he himself had made even this sacrifice and did what he could have done. When Samuel arrived, my friends, at Gilgal, is there Samuel realized that Saul had already made the sacrifice and Saul had done what he purposed even his heart to do. In verse 12 of chapter 13 in the first Samuel, we are told that Samuel said to Saul, 
I, the Philistine, the Philistine will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord, and forced myself there for an offer, a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly, thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now, for now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel even forever. What we understand there, my friend, is that when Samuel came down to Gilgal, Saul had already made the sacrifice and did a couple of things. But what we need to draw from that this morning, what caused Saul not to wait, my friends, upon Samuel? It was simply, my brothers and my sisters, because fear had taken hold upon Saul. Saul was fearful. Saul was fearful because of the people that was around him in Gilgal. Saul was fearful, my friends, because at the time he was looking for Samuel to show up, Samuel did not show up at that appointed time. Saul was fearful also, my friends, because of circumstances around him. He said, I saw that the people were scattered. I realized that you were not coming. And I was but fearful. But here, my friends, I want to leave some thoughts with us this morning about fear. And first and foremost, my friends, we must understand this. Fear gives way to dismay. We ask ourselves this morning, what is dismay? And it's defined as a feeling of unhappiness and discouragement. Now the word of the Lord came to Samuel to tell Saul to go down. And Saul went down. But when he reached there, when he arrived there, he felt a sense of unhappiness and discouragement. My friends, we all are human beings. We would experience such things in our own life. But we must remember, my brothers and my sisters, we must take God at his word. We are reminded in the book of Numbers that God had told the Israelites that the land of Canaan was going to be theirs. And it was there that they were there ready to go and possess the land. But it was at that point in time that Moses sent out 12 spies to go and view the land, my friends, of Canaan. When they reached the land, they realized that the land was a pleasant land. They realized that the land was a fruitful land. They realized that the land was a wonderful land, but they had one problem that they faced there. They realized that the people in the land of Canaan were giants, my friends, even before them. And whilst my friends, ten of them came with a, a report and said it's a good land. It's a fruitful land. We are like grasshoppers before those giants. We are not able to take that land. But then it was Joshua and Caleb who said, let us go up at once. For we are well able, my friends, to take this land. We need to understand, my friends, it was only two of them. All the others, my friends, it was simply because of fear in their heart that they said we are not able to take it. God, and hear this this morning, God is more powerful than any, hallelujah, God is more powerful than anything, my friend, that will ever come up against you and I. He is more powerful than any struggle or fear, hallelujah, that you and I will ever face. Jesus, my friend, speaking to the disciples, when they ask him, Lord, tell us what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. And why did they ask him that? It was because they were a bit dismayed at that particular time when they learned, my friend, of his imminent departure from them. And so in Matthew and chapter 24, we would learn, my friends, from Matthew and chapter 24 and verses through, my friends, even to 11. And it was there that Jesus was speaking to them to encourage and to strengthen my brothers and my sisters even their hearts and this is the word that Jesus spoke unto them and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end my friend the same shall be saved what am I saying to us this morning it is that we ought my friend to dismay fear disappear we must allow my friend 
friend, the fears in our lives to be removed. And we must believe and trust God at his word, my friends, this morning. To the disciples, Jesus said, not to be fearful or discouraged when looking at the signs, my friends, of the time. Secondly, my friends, fear does not only give way to dismay, but fear, my friends, paralyzes. Fear paralyzes. And hear what it says. To make someone unable to move a part of the body or prevent something, hallelujah, from functioning normally. I recall this morning the story with Jesus and the disciples when he told them to get into the ship. And to go on the other side of Galilee. And we are told that while they were journeying, my friend, hallelujah, Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship. He fell asleep, my friend. And it was there that the wind pattern changed. And the waters, the waves was now boisterous. The water now was now coming into the ship. And those men were there now. They were fearful for their lives, my friend. In other words, all the while before, they were handling things on their own. But at this particular time, because of the waves that was boisterous around us, and they felt a sense of threat, fear got hold upon them. They went and they cried out, Jesus, Master, Hearest thou that we perish? And hear what Jesus said. O ye of little faith. Why are you so fearful? And Jesus calmed that way. And then we are told my friend that the disciples turned and said. Oh what manner of man this is. Even the wind and the waves my friends obey his voice. Fear my friends paralyzes. One can become so gripped my fear. Hallelujah. That, my friends, we're no longer able to function as a normal human being. When we think about the passages, my friends, that we share, we think about Saul again. Fear got so cold and got that grip upon him that he was unable to function as a normal being. We are told, my friends, that this same fear, my friend, can take hold of any and every one of us. And in this fear, my friend, we ask ourselves a couple questions at times. How will I get through my friends tomorrow? We think about tomorrow. How will I get through my friends tomorrow? Will I be able to keep my job? Will I have food for myself and even my family? Will I ever be able to get through this COVID period time, my friend? How am I? But we need to understand God has not given unto us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. Hallelujah. And of a strong mind. So first we understand, my friend, that fear gives way, my friends, to dismay. Fear, in other words, paralyzes. It brings us in that position that we are unable to operate as any normal human being would. And thirdly, my brothers and my sisters, we need to understand this. Fear leads to wrong reasoning and conclusion. Fear leads to, to, to wrong reasoning and conclusion. We read, my friends, in the book of Exodus, God told Moses to take Israel even across to the promised land. And while they were going, my friends, through the wilderness, fear came upon them. And they said to Moses, we told you we would have been better off serving, my friends, the Egyptians even in the land of Egypt. Because there was sufficient grave to bury us. There was enough food for us to eat. Why didn't you leave us? If we allow, and hear this, my brothers and my sisters, if we allow fear to take hold upon us, then, then our reasoning and conclusion will always be contrary. Can I say that again this morning? If we allow fear to take hold of us, then our reasoning and conclusion will always be contrary. Think about Saul, my friends, in the world that we share. And what happened to Saul as he went across the Gilgal? It was not the right reasoning and conclusion that Saul came up with. 
But at that particular time, my friend, he said to Samuel, I fear because, you know what, I saw the people, they were not together around me. I saw, in other words, as they were uh, even, my friends, against me. Oh, what we need, my friends, to listen to fear. Because fear leads, my friends, to wrong reasoning and conclusion. I want to go again to that word in the book of Numbers that we are told that I quoted just now. That we are told that when the spies went out, those ten, my friends, had a wrong reasoning and conclusion. They say, we are not able. We are not able because we are like grasshoppers. Hallelujah in the sight of those giants. And Saul said to Samuel, because the people were not together, because of circumstances around me. But I want to encourage you today, my friends, God is greater than any issue that you and I will ever face. Fear leads, my friends, to wrong reasoning and conclusion. How we conclude sometimes about God. That God is not at work in our lives. That God is not ready to take us through. That God is not on our side. But my friend, God is ever on our side. But we need to remove the fear and the doubts that ever so often arises in your mind and my mind. And finally, my friends. Fear leads to wrong action. Fear leads to wrong action. And I want to focus on that 13th chapter again. And hear what it says. And Samuel said, and this is Samuel speaking to Saul, What hast thou done? So we understand this morning that fear leads my brothers and my sisters to wrong action. What hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmah. Therefore I said, the Philistines will come down, and hallelujah, now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. Fear leads, my friends, to wrong action. Saul did not wait, my friends. Saul did not wait, my brothers and my sisters, for the appointed time. He went, he went ahead and offered the burnt offering. When Samuel arrived, he asked him, What hallelujah hast thou done? Doesn't that speak about you and I today, my friends? Ever so often, God would have given us his word. And because of fear, we end up doing the wrong thing. And so it's all, my friends, and we need to be very careful. Saul allowed, and here is where, Saul allowed fear to take hold of him. He feared the people. He feared Samuel would not have showed up. He feared circumstances. When trouble, and this is what we need to understand, when trouble surrounds us, my friend, we don't have to, to be despaired because God is going to bring you and I through. God is going to be there even for us. God never shows up when it is too late. He's a God that always moves on time. Today, my friends, as we meditate on these words, we can't but ask ourselves or wonder how many people throughout the Christian church have followed the same course of action even as all. Because God simply does not show up when they think, my friends, he should. Then they take over the reins and begins, my friends, to follow their own way. But what does Proverbs say? There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So when we see because God does not show up, my friends, when we think he should, we take, my friends, over the rain and begin to follow our own leading. This is what happened to Saul. When Saul realized that Samuel did not come down, when he was looking and expecting him to, Saul went before and he made his own sacrifice. And there in verse 14, the verse that I did not read, and hear what the word of the Lord says, But now thy kingdom shall continue, shall not continue. The Lord has fought 
him a man after his own heart. And the Lord had commanded him to be captain over his people. Because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. God was not pleased because Saul did not follow, hallelujah, his word. The social, and here this, my friend, the social and economic crisis of our age are not due to bad luck or accident. I want to say that again. The social and economic crisis of our age are not due, my friends, to bad luck or accident. They are unavoidable consequences of a fallen world attempting to deal, my friends, with the world's problem on their own or without relying on God. And here this is I told. God has promised that he will never fail us nor forsake us. But we must learn to wait upon him in faith and obey his voice despite what fears may begin to arise, my friends, in our hearts. Today we may be asking ourselves how can i get rid my friends of the fear that have taken hold my friends of my life my word for you and for all of us today is simply this to begin believing the word of god can i say that again this morning we may ask ourselves my friend how am i going to get over this fear that has taken hold my friends of my life my word for you today is Begin believing the word of God. Secondly, my friends, trust him in every way and in everything. In Exodus chapter 14 and verse 13, Moses said unto the people of Israel, Fear ye not. Moses, in other words, was warning the people not to let fear lead and govern them. Not to let it, my friends, mold their thinking or distort their image, my friends, of God. Instead, they were to stand still, be quiet, believe God, and wait and see how things would work out for their good. Paul in Romans says, for we know that all things work together for good. To them that love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. How about you today, my friends? Has fear gotten hold upon your life? And you are wondering, my friends, how to overcome this fear in your life. But as I shared with us those four things uh, that, my friend, that fear does in our lives, first and foremost, fear gives way to dismay. They were dismayed, those guys, ten of them were dismayed, but only two of them believed and brought, my friends, a good report. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you are experiencing in your life right now. I don't know what your challenges are. But what I want to allow you to know this morning, don't allow fear to take hold upon your life because it would cause you to be dismayed. There's a song that says, be not dismayed. Whatever time, God will take care of you. Then secondly, fear paralyzes. In other words, it causes us to become handicapped. We can't function, we cannot operate as we would and as we ought to. And then thirdly, my friends, fear leads to wrong reasoning and conclusion. Sometimes we live by saying, I thought, I thought it would have. But we can't come up with things on our own. We need to trust God and take him at his word. And finally, my brothers and my sisters today, we need to understand that fear leads to wrong action. Probably fear has gotten hold of your life. But I'm here to remind you to believe God and take God at his word. Let faith arise and doubt and fears will scatter. God bless you. Keep holding your head up high. And any and every time or any time that, that fear was arise in your mind. Hallelujah. Get rid of it. And says, get thee hence Satan. 
God is able to keep you. Father, we bless you this morning for your word this morning. Your word that has brought comfort, strength, and encouragement to our hearts. And that word, pray God, we pray, will continue to lead and cheer us and help us, oh God, that our choices in life would be based on that of yours that you have purposed, oh God, for us and even for us to fulfill your mandate in our life. Father, we pray this morning that your peace that passes at all understanding will ever abide with us. We pray that Lord your strong anointing oh God will be upon us that Lord we will walk in your ways and even at times and moments Lord when there is no visible sign of you at work and around us and supporting us with God in our spirit God we will know that you are near and you are ever there for us. Father we thank you again for your peace that passeth all understanding and keep us, O oh Lord, in all our ways as we go from day to day. Bless us again, great God, for we ask it in Jesus' name.